and we're live. Hey, Marty, how are you? Oh, good morning. Um, it's a good morning, a good Friday morning to have a startup jam, isn't it? It sure is. It's an awesome Friday morning to have a startup jam. Mm -hmm. How are you? Doing great this morning. Lots are you? Stuff, lots of stuff going on, Jane. Yeah, that, that there is quite a lot of stuff, Marty. <laughs> so, so first of all, we should say that the uh, lovely April in Prince Edward Island is not yet with us, but she has told us that she is just a little bit delayed in another hangout, and then she'll be joining us. Yeah. Um, Jane, do you happen to have the link that I could promote on Twitter right now? I should. So do. that we can let any viewers that want to participate or view uh, join in. I sure do. So um, for people who might still be figuring out certain parts of Hangouts, what I'm actually going to do is, because I, I'm the person who initiated this Hangout, I am able to access the link or the embed code or the URL, and I have put it in the group chat, which just is alongside the video box for Marty, so she can grab it. But I actually also have tweeted it out already. And so, Marty, it is in your Twitter feed as well already. Because okay. I, I named you in it. All right. So I, um, I'm unsuccessful in seeing it in the, ch uh, the chat box. But maybe there's just a little bit of a delay. Hmm. Not why too certain. Check, why don't you just check in your, are, do you have your Twitter open? I do. I'm going to check so there right now. Just check your Twitter because I, I did tweet it so you can just retweet it. And then uh, it, that will get it out. That sounds like a great idea, Jane. So I love that um, April said that she was tied up with something, but even more interesting and cool is that I love that she said she was tied up in another hangout, uh -huh. which is great because it means that um, I think the three of us are starting to use hangouts a lot more. You know, since we first started Startup Jam, which, gosh, where are we now? It's July. Um, right. It's You know, we're getting into the middle of July, aren't we? And... Uh, we started Startup Jam, I think it was around the beginning of June, wasn't it? It was. It's gone yeah. by fast. Time flies. And so because of that, uh, I think all three of us are actually using Hangouts a lot more now. Uh, yes, pretty extensively um, in our businesses. Yeah, so very much so. Um, very much so. So, did you were you able to find that and get that? Sent I out? absolutely found that, and it's Excellent. been put out uh, so that others may be interested in joining us this morning. I, I think maybe so, because I see some people are hopping on, so that's cool. Okay. So, what's the weather like in Chicago? Um, perfect today. It's going to be um, 90 degrees, but it's starting out at wow. 70, and um, you know we're going to be entering another minor heat wave next week, but just really enjoying the somewhat cooler weather. It's great for running, and it's just very invigorating for just doing business and having fun. Yeah, very nice. And the humidity is not too bad, or what's um, it like? Hasn't been bad, but it's supposed to it's supposed to pick up in the next 24 there hours. There you go. So there you we're go. used to that. That's okay. Yeah. Well, I'm happy to report that we've had like at least five days in a row where it hasn't rained in Vancouver. <laughs> so uh -huh. we are starting to feel like summer is here at last. And I think, you know, there were a lot of people that were feeling quite disheartened that maybe summer was never going to come. But mm -hmm. it actually has arrived. And it's very beautiful. And and uh, it's it's really great, you know, for getting outside mm -hmm. and, and all of that. So, yeah. yeah. Well, that's good. It's mid, you know, almost mid-July, so we're, we deserve to have summer weather, right? That's, that's exactly it. Yeah. So you have a lot of great things going on. T talk to me about some of the stuff that you've got happening. Um, some of the things, um, one thing is I'm working on a really interesting blog post for, that's very, very germane to startups and um, all kinds of businesses, really. Um, I say it's for small businesses and large businesses because I've run marketing in medium and larger sized businesses. And it's the concept of a minimum viable brand. And 
No, what is, go ahead. I was just going to say. I was just going to say for somebody who perhaps doesn't even understand or know what that what right. a minimum viable brand is. Can you talk about that a bit? Okay. So I'll step back a little bit. Um, when any company wants to initiate uh, a branding program, which involves sometimes creating na a name, sometimes reinventing their position a little bit. Sometimes they have the name, sometimes they have the logo, sometimes they don't. Um, but these things have to be done, and they can be very time-consuming. They're, they're branding programs. You can hire a branding firm. You can do it internally. And they can be quite costly, and they can also take um, a lot of time. They can mm -hmm. take six months to a year in a large company. Well, when you're moving really fast, you don't have that kind of time. Yet, if you don't have brand infrastructure, like your values and your position and things like that, yeah. it's really hard to know who you are and, or who your company is and how to promote right. yourself. So it's not just about saying, I need to promote this business. You really need to understand your market. You need to understand your position in the market. And you really need to understand the personality of who you are. And yeah. so the minimum viable brand is taking a page out of the book of minimum viable product made popular by Eric Ries in 2009 when he launched the Lean Startup Movement. Okay. And so his concept was in developing product, you get something out there quicker, you get feedback, you create a feedback loop, you refine it, you tweak it, and then you get to the next stage and you make your product better and better. I believe the same thing can happen with brands. You can nurture yeah. it in a way that it could just really flourish and blossom. Right. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. So now um, talk about, so you said that you're working on a blog post. In, right. In, so, so talk about that then a little bit. Yeah, so the blog post is going to have um, uh, a brand development model, the conventional one that right. um, I co-developed with another um, creative uh, person uh, several years ago. Uh, so it'll talk about the model and then it'll talk about the, the way to approach it to create a minimum viable brand in a smaller amount of time so that you can get on with business. The assumption is that most businesses that are doing branding are doing it for a reason. If they're rebranding it, they're doing it because A, they're lagging in sales, maybe they've had a merger, maybe they're just starting up. They're, they're doing it because they've got, they've got to correct a problem or a perception in the marketplace. Right. And, right. So, and it just needs to get out there. But sales are a big, usually a big part of it. You know, memberships down, sales down. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. these kinds of things can then be corrected by really cultivating your brand in a way that um, mm -hmm. gets your message out there. Right. So uh, now I, I know I was just thinking as um, you were saying to me yesterday that you were starting to, you know, prepare and write this blog post. And I know that's something that you and I have had, you know, lots of great discussions and even April just about, you know, finding the time to continuously keep your blog up to date. It, it can be a challenge, especially for solopreneurs. I think, you know, we're, we're busy doing so many different things, uh, you know, in relation to our businesses yet. Um, you know, having your blog have relevant content and, and really um, maintaining that. You know, I, I find for me, I kind of go through time periods where I'm, yeah, you know, I'm on like let's, a blog post, I can just nail them out there. And then I have a period of time where it's not so easy to do that. And I know this is something that a lot of bloggers struggle with. So, I mean, how, how have you been finding that? Yeah, I've, I've been struggling. Um, yeah. I've been struggling a lot with that. I think it's perfectionist tendencies and yeah. writing. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I'm creating diagrams and things like that for the minimum viable brand one because I think it's useful for the visual. Right. I yeah. typically don't, don't do that. But, you know, I, I think it's about really a combination of maybe doing some blog posts like that that are a little bit more in-depth and that are very substantive. Mm -hmm. uh, but then it's also uh, just keeping the moments alive or keeping the conversation alive. What That's have right. you found? What have yeah. you found to work, Jane? Well, I think what I have found is that um, 
I've become sort of more aware, like initially I was very focused always just on writing, right? Like, okay, I've got to, you know, have a written post. And then I think what I've discovered now since I've started using Audioboo, for example, that I'm doing, you know, um, at least several times a week I'm recording an Audioboo and using that. And, you know, so it's, it's a different type of content that I'm producing. And then, of course, um, you know, we'll, we'll chat in a little bit about the Hangouts that I've been doing, but I have been doing more Hangouts and recording those, and that, again, that's another kind of content, right? So I've been doing those live on air like this one is. Um, so that, you know, I, I think what's happened is I'm, I, I guess we could say I'm diversifying the kind of content that I'm putting together. And so right. my big job now is going to be really how I pull that, you know, all into, into one place. Um, right. Yeah, so, but I do know that it is something that, uh, I mean, well, you and I, we both, uh, you know, um, participate in blog chat on Twitter, and, you know, these are things that bloggers struggle with, and especially, I think, you know, startups, when they kind of get clear on sort of their position, and if you're new to blogging, it can be a big issue for people. So, Jane, you said the magic word, really. It's a little segue from blogging and how we struggle with <laughs> generating content. We all know bloggers that blog every day, and they have their guest posts lined up, you know, almost a year in advance, and it's very impressive, and they're, they're successful as a result. Yeah, yeah. But let's shift to, um, let's turn the conversation back to you, and I'm using the word conversation intentionally here. Um, you, came up, you came up with an idea. I came up with an idea uh, about just before July 4th. I think it might have been July 1st or something like that. It was like July that. 1st. Yeah. Actually, I, I think I came up with the idea at about 11.30 on the night before July 1st. And, and because July 1st, of course, I'm in Canada. So July 1st is Canada Day. Uh, and so um, I came up with this idea that wouldn't it be crazy and interesting if I did a significant number of Google Plus on-air Hangouts as conversations with people all around the world. Um, and that initially my idea was that I would go until July 4th. And part of the reason was that July 4th happened to be my birthday. And I thought, well, that's a good, you know, that's a good deadline. And it's a good way to kind of end, end all these conversations. And for whatever reason, I ended up picking the number 45, which in hindsight was an astronomically crazy number of uh, conversations to think that I might have in four days. But nevertheless, I had um, you know, enough um, people, yourself included, uh, April, um, Paul Lomani in Ireland, and um, uh, you know, Greg McQueen in Denmark, and, you know, I kind of bounced this idea off of all of you, and, you know, I had enough kind of support to say, yeah, that's crazy enough, to run with it and see where it goes, and so I did. So I started um, with this idea of wanting to have these conversations um, with these 45 people. I didn't actually know uh, who all of them would be, and so July 1st rolled around, and I, I mean, I didn't have them lined up, right? So I started trying to find people to have these Google Plus on air Hangouts with. And what I quickly discovered was that um, there were a lot of logistics in coordinating that many people in a short amount of time um, and in ensuring that they would feel comfortable to come on air. Like there was sort of a technology learning curve that was involved. So I think by the end of July 1st, I had one or two conversations done. And I went to bed that night thinking, oh, my goodness, what have I done? But you know what? The next day, July 2nd, I rolled through. I think I did 12 conversations in that day. And then I kept on going. So by, you know, by the end of July 4th, I had done, I believe it was 25 conversations. And I thought, wow. I'm, you know, and I was having so, so much amazing fun with it. It was just really cool. So in the end, what has happened is I decided to keep on going. And... I'm not yet at my 45 conversations. I've slowed down my pace now, deliberately so. Um, but I think uh, today I'm set to have, I think it's three conversations, and I will, um, it, you know, it looks like probably within about 10 days I'll, I'll end, at, you know, at end on my last 45th conversation. Um, 
which is pretty exciting. It's pretty exciting. I have an observation about you that I've been watching, and this um, what you're doing right now is a very logical extension of who you are and the value you bring to relationships, Jane. What yeah. I see you doing is you build momentum and interest around a topic. And I'll use an example of, you know, SobCon or Social HR Camp or whatever you get involved in, you tend to right. have a lot of interest in it and you build it up and you instinctively, I've seen you do this over the last year, you instinctively say, how can I connect all these people together and how can I make everybody feel at home at this conference? Yeah, and yeah. and you, you, you put things out there in a way that I think are very inviting and engaging. So you, you are an engaging conversationalist. And um, this is a, a fun thing to watch evolve. And I think the 45 Conversations as the platform for that development is very intriguing. And the marketplace is very interested mm -hmm. in what you're going to do next with this. And yeah. I know, you, I know mm -hmm. you've got plans. And I know I, that those are... I do are, have plans. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah it's, pretty, it's pretty exciting. And I mean... The thing is, there's obviously what I've discovered as I've done this is that 45 conversations is kind of the beginning of moving on to, you know, something even more interesting and intriguing with it. And, um, you know, so I'm happy to say that when I get to 45, it really is not the end. And I've learned so much. I mean, the thing that the magic that has happened with it, I think, at least that I have felt is that Every single conversation has been so unique. I mean, and people are unique. They're unique individuals, right? So what I've really loved is the opportunity to connect with people in a way that just, you know, I can hear their story and hear what it is that they're passionate about and, and you know, what they're working on. Or You know, my goodness, like I, I've learned things about people that I, I would have never known, right? And and I think that that's intriguing. I mean, it brings sort of a human element to the person, and and especially when we're in this sort of social space, you know, we learn a lot about people through Twitter. We see pictures of their kids, you know, what they're doing with you know projects or work that they're working on. But to me, this is a way to bring another human element to it. I guess you could say. And you know, wow, how cool that we have something like Google Plus Hangouts to be able to do that. Yes, it, it, it has been an extraordinary platform and, you know, shifting a little bit to the Google Plus platform or the Hangout platform, mm -hmm. um, we're, we're all using it a bit more. What I have found, I've conducted some of um, just Hangouts. Um, I'm going to be doing some on-air um, conversations myself around yes. the topic of Agile marketing. Uh, one of the initiatives that I am involved in is to create awareness for the agile marketing movement. Now, how does one do that? You do that a lot with content and your typical uh, marketing things. And of course, all of us that are developing, and we did create, we're creating an agile marketing manifesto, about 30 of us. And it is out there, it's online, um, agile marketing. Uh, .org, I think it is, right now. It was down yesterday, uh, having some hosting problems. But yeah. um, we're, we're, I'm going to be using the um, Google on-air Hangouts as a mechanism to get these thoughts out there because it is a new move and people don't know what it is. They don't know how to apply it. And the only way to do right. that is to get the message out. Yeah. Uh, we, yeah. Need, we need written documentation. We need written case studies. Mm -hmm. And I thought my contribution could be um, sharing this information globally. There's some experts in Europe that are very, you know, front runners in this. Um, a guy named Neil Perkins. They're front runners in this movement. So I will reach out to the people across the globe so that we can bring it together. Um, yeah, I mean that. That I think it's so great that you're doing that and. You know, and you said something key there, you know, people across the globe. And to me, that's another element of what, you know, what these Hangouts enable us to be able to do, right? I mean, we, we all know that, you know, we can connect with people through social media in so many different ways, no matter where we are in the world, literally. But 
by, you know, especially for something like this area that you're focused on with, with within a particular, I guess, topic, you know, around agile marketing, this is such a great way for you to connect with these people wherever they are. It's really awesome. And I think what you and I both have discovered uh, since Startup Jam started in June is that I made the assumption that everybody's doing this and I'm, you know, I'm not the early adopter. I'm not often the early adopter on technology. I love technology. I love new things. But yeah. I usually go with a certain flow. I'm not a late adopter by any means. But um, I, we're on this way where a lot of people, you spend the first um, five to ten minutes really working out the technology. And in so That's doing, right. we're learning and they're learning. For sure. And, and people think, wow, you can just see, as you say, you see the wheels turning. Like people you think, do. this is new. I've never done this before. Marty, this is the first Google Hangout I've done. I know, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It's just so charming and, and so wonderful um, to, to be doing that because we're, we're stimulating this concept of sharing information in this way. Yes. Um, yeah. And then it also just has such a useful useful platform for um, content marketing. I, absolutely. I, I, very much so. And I do know, like, if I think about, say, the 45 conversations and, you know, the number of conversations that I've had so far, the majority of people who participated in those conversations, the hangout that they had with me would have been their first hangout. So that that's pretty intriguing. Like, Actually, there were quite a few of them that didn't even have Google Plus accounts, right? They hadn't even signed up for Google right. Plus. Um, so, you know, it's been a great way to, I think, introduce people to that, this particular platform. And, I mean, that's not to say that there aren't other ways that we can, you know, facilitate this. I mean, people can have Skype um, events, you know, there's other webinar types of events and, and services that you can use. but. Let's just be realistic here that the ease in terms of, um, you know, at, for no cost, <laughs> you yeah. know, that people can get together, <laughs> up to 10 people can get together in a hangout and be on air. And that is the, that's the difference. And I think that there's quite a lot of people who actually still don't realize that the on-air component exists, right? So, they, so because hangouts have been around for a year. But I think that there are people who have not yet kind of put all the pieces together and gone, wow, you, you mean I could do an event and have this many people come or have a conversation, you know, like I'm doing with people or, you know, like we're missing April. I wish that I saw her little picture down here and she was yeah. with us, you know, but, you know, like, like we do with Startup Jam where a few people get together and, you know, we, well, what we're doing, how do we even define Startup Jam? But you know what I'm saying? So. I think that people are still, they're, they're coming to understand the platform. So, right, we are, you know, we're pretty, I guess, in a sense, early out the gate on it. But what I love is that as we share that experience with other people and our colleagues, now we're starting to see them applying yeah. and using it as well, right? Which yeah. Is very neat. What I find intriguing, too, is people are willing to go on air. Yes. I love that. I love that people... You know, not only are they willing to do the this video, but they're they're willing to go on on air. And then just to talk about the tool again, the Google tool. Like, if you you know, if we went a few years back on this, you'd have to create you'd have to create the content, and then you'd have to upload it, and you'd have to manage it, and all that. How great is That's it that right. this is an integrated API situation where absolutely after, after our hangout today, this thing will automatically be uploaded with no you know, you don't have to do anything. It just happens well, and... Yeah, and I mean, that is so true. So, like, literally the, the ease in which that it happens, you know, if, if, if I had thought that I, for 45 conversations, that I would have had to, you know, uh, just all the technology, you know what I mean, if I had had to record all the recordings oh, yeah. and then, you know, edit them and... and like, there's just something that's totally different about it in the sense that A, it's live, and B, uh, when it's live, you know what, there's, there's complete and total room for authenticity at that point because we're live, right? You know, I mean, right. I, I, I can't go back and, I mean, well, I could, I guess, download it and edit it, but you know what, we're live. So it's, it's yeah. a totally different perspective, but right. I think you're right, people, 
are quite open to that. Like I, I really haven't had anyone say to me, oh, I don't want to do that because it's live. You know, no one has said that. So, yeah. so that tells me that we're moving into kind of a different space and comfort zone with right. people with this kind of technology. Yeah, and I, um, I run marketing for um, a company um, as well, and one of the things we did, you know, were these Geek TV videos for engineers. How right. great now will this be a platform to do these kinds of things mm -hmm. and with ease, without worrying about that we have to do everything that's a how-to. Sometimes it's just doing a snippet of a concept, yeah. right, and getting it out there. So whether it's two minutes or five minutes, you know, I remember when I was doing the Geek TV videos, everyone told me, Marty, you can't do anything for longer than two minutes. If you do it for longer than two minutes, no one's going to watch it. Well, you know what, I put some coursework up there by um, our CTO, and they were an hour and a half long. And people, wow. do wa people do watch them because it's content and it's training. So yes. it's, if it's packaged in the right way, and it's like if you just want to get a snippet, like how to, you know, open up this software development kit and get it going quickly, you know, maybe you only want to do it for two minutes. But if you want to mm -hmm. really elaborate on the concept, on a, a concept that people want to dig in a little bit deeper, you know, they may use it as their their own education channel. Yeah, yeah, very interesting. Um, when I know when I have my conversation with Rick Dragon, actually, he talked about the idea because they've been doing sort of lunch and learn kinds of things for um, their staff with startups and you know having startups come in and and it so happened that. Um, you know, Nick Kellett, who's the co-founder of Listly, who we both know, he was in New York. And so Nick had gone in and had, you know, done this whole sort of lunch and learn about what, you know, what Listly is all about. And and so uh, Rick was saying to me, look, I would really like to bring in other startups. But, you know, in reality, a lot of these startups are, you know, they're all over the place. And, and, and so he was really thinking that, you know, Hangouts would be a great way for him to actually, you know, bring a founder or a co-founder or, you know, co-founders together or whatever to come in and talk to his team about whatever they were doing. And even if his team, you know, some of them are not there, they can be part of the Hangout too. Yeah. And I thought yeah. that's, that's pretty neat, you know. That's, that's a really yeah. great observation by Rick. Absolutely. Um, it's a great observation and it makes me think that I'm running a marketing um, hackathon in in Chicago in the fall, I, we don't have the date yet, uh, it's going to be October, and then we're, um, I'm actually collaborating with Rick Dragon and a couple others, uh, Robert mm -hmm. Moore of Internet Media Labs, um, to put on a marketing hackathon in New York. Right. I, think we, I think we should do a session on that the, what content marketing, what this form of content marketing is, and how it can help help your business grow and get the yeah. message out in an exceedingly fast pace. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, it, you know, and not only, I mean, well, I mean, you know, events can be businesses too, but from the perspective of, you know, building momentum for events and different ways, you know, I, I've been sort of thinking, are, you know, are we actually going to see, start to see hangouts happening within events? That's really intriguing to me, and I, I, I wonder where that's going to go. So, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of cool stuff happening, yeah. right? You know, it's there pretty is. exciting. It's very exciting. You know, and I see we've had a couple of shout outs here. Um, the lovely fireman Rich, who is in, I believe, upper state New York, and he often tunes in to uh, different things. I believe he works different schedules and things, and so it's great. He's uh, given us some shout outs on, on Twitter, which has been awesome. This morning we say hello to him. And who else was it? Somebody else stopped by and left. I apologize. I'm just trying to see if I can see who it was. Um, Andrew Marshall. Andrew Marshall said good morning oh. to Marty and Jane, which was kind of yeah. cool. So yeah, so nice to see uh, see him stopping by. So that's kind of neat. Yeah, I'm so, glad. I'm glad to yeah. hear. I'm glad to hear Andrew Marshall. I was watching some of his tweets yesterday and. Uh, yeah. communicated back to him, hadn't uh, talked or heard uh, from him in a while, so it's, yeah. it's great that uh, he stopped by for a bit. I, I think actually he was tweeting us as well when we when we did the last Startup Jam and you were in New York, I think he mm -hmm. might have been that. Uh, yeah, so that's really neat. Uh -huh. So, 
Yeah, so I was kind of hoping that April would show up, but I I don't know. I guess yeah. she's, she's she's tied up in her other hangouts. So uh, I, mean, I I guess it's all the mark of running a business too, right? Absolutely. So um, yeah. when um, I'm you know, I'm transforming what I'm doing. I, you know, eventually I will not be working full time and doing consulting and doing all of this. I'd like to uh, uh, select uh, a few <laughs> less things and be yeah. more focused, right? But, you, right? but let's just talk about the uh, the startup component, solopreneur Absolutely. component. Yeah. I, I think about what April's going through. We have a lot of, you know, like any business, there's a lot of balls to juggle. There and are. there's a lot of demands on our time, and it's it's really it's no different than any other job. There's a lot of um, interruptions That's and right. and meetings that go longer, right? So, well, but yeah, I, I think it is. It's kind of interesting because um, you know there are so many different things that we all face on different levels. I think when we're when we're in a startup mode or you know, if we're really in a deep project that, you know, requires sort of an intense amount of energy, mm -hmm. uh, or if we're going through a process of sort of rebranding, which is, you know, what I've really been mm -hmm. working on over the last little while, and, and, you know, 45 Conversations is a big part of where I'm going to be going with, with uh, lots more to come on that. But, I, I mean, I know it, whether, you know, whether you have kids or not, I mean, it so happens April and I both have kids, but... You know, all of us, we have, you have a large family, Marty, you know, with lots of brothers and sisters and, you know, I mean, we all have different things that we've got going on, right? And when you kind of combine that in with also all of the work that we're trying to do and the passion that we have, because let's face yeah. it, the three of us are just a little bit passionate <laughs> about our, our work and our business and, you know, our clients and all of that, it's it is, it is a, I don't want to say it's a juggling, but it's, you know, you're continuously, there's give and take on so many levels, right? Right. One of the things that I find intriguing about a process like this when there's a lot going on, because I think you're, you're really developing something very special for yourself. I'm evolving um, some of what I've been doing. I've worked in um, a lot in brand development and um, kickstarting market demand for companies companies I really have a passion for it but one thing that I really have a passion for is the creative process oh well, yeah I was sharing that with you that you know whether it's a blog post or creating an idea or creating a new product that if you try to sit down and ram it through in eight hours not going to happen right if you've ever worked it's at the so true. Through, yeah you, you got to <laughs> I, I, I know yeah you, got to let it marinate, you got to let it, um, you know, bubble to the surface, and you have to give it some time. So as much as we want to get things done really fast and get like, we have got to get this done tonight, yeah. sometimes you need to let it sit. And um, I think I told you I was working on an idea last night. I didn't really assign it to myself, but I, I, it, I went to sleep. You know, I must have been thinking about it, and I came up this morning with a solution, and it's, that's how creativity works. Yeah, it's just it, it hits you when you least expect it. But I think it's an exciting time when you are in the process of creating and evolving. Yeah, and I, I mean I've experienced that too, where you kind of you're right, you're 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 working on something and you're putting so much energy into it, and then it's actually when you're not thinking about it that oftentimes is where the I don't know, the magic or the answer or the solution comes from, you know, it's, it's like, do you remember you wrote that blog post um, a while back and it always stuck with me, the one about white spaces, wasn't it, didn't you talk about white spaces and creativity and how that all, you know, comes together? Yeah, and do you remember, do you remember that? Yeah. I know and I, I really appreciated your comments about it back then and uh, one of the things that inspired me to write that was, I've worked in corporate environments. I've worked in Fortune 500 companies and small and medium businesses. And you know, your management often wants you to produce, 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 and yes. and they want um, you know productivity and your staff and everybody working to optimum levels. So I I actually was pretty good at that. I was pretty good yeah. at setting up project plans and having my team um, you know fill all their time, but 
I've realized in hindsight that that's not good for your team if you're not leaving them some room for white space. They, right. they, they, they can get burned out and I can get burned out and if you don't take that time for white space, how are you going to generate the new ideas or be open to the new happenings that mm -hmm. are out there in the market, you know, new tools and how are you going to refresh? You know, you should really be taking like little mini vacations of your brain pretty often so That's that right. you are very good at what you do. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, um, and there's so many ways you can do that, like get, you know, get, change your environment, get, get away from your desk mm -hmm. or wherever you are, or, you know, if you're, if you're not a person that works at a desk, but, you know, you are, are in different places, change up where it is that you normally are, you know, doing your work, right? Mm -hmm. Go to a different coffee shop, you know, choose a different exactly. Starbucks, choose somewhat, something different to look at. Um, uh, and get it. I mean, physical exercise. I mean, you do a lot of running and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I am not. I admit, this is not a good thing that I'm really not on it. But you know what I did last night? I will admit this. I went and I bought a stationary bicycle because I just I for whatever reason. I mean, I've got my kids. I you know like it's people say, oh, get out and get walking with the kids. And stuff. It doesn't always work. You know, I mean, I try to do that, but let's face it, we're a busy family, lots on the go. So I actually bought a stationary bicycle. That's a I great set it idea. in my kitchen. And you know what, Marty? I rode eight kilometers last night. Because yeah. I can just I just knew I need to have that, you know, I need I need the exercise number one. But number two, just I think, you know, when you do physical exercise, it it, it helps your brain process stuff. I I mean I I I'm not an athlete, but I truly believe that for sure. Well, you know, I remember the story, and I don't remember the woman's name, but she became a marathoner, and I think she was up in um, Alaska or something, and it was, you know, a long winter training. She did most of it indoors on a treadmill. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. you know, yeah, it's not the same as being out on the open road, and I'm trying to, you know, do this training for Pikes Peak, and I don't have any hills in Chicago, so I'm, yeah. I'm going up hundreds of flights. That's in right. a high rise, and it's it's not a pretty hallway. I mean, it's just no, it's exactly. just metal. It's metal exactly. and cinder block walls, and I'm going up and down the stairs, and it's um, but it's it's what I have, and it's what I can do. That's right, to, and you to mimic and you, that. Yeah, and you got to take advantage of that. So I mean, let's not think that I never get out of my house and I'm only going to stand, you know, be on my stationary yeah. bicycle at beautiful beaches and stuff too. So, you know, and I've been doing that. There's a beautiful beach that I've been going to down because, you know, I'm very close to the United States. So I just cross over the border. It's literally two minutes from my house and I've been going to this amazing beach in Point Roberts, Washington, which is just like, it's astounding views. And I, it, what I've been talking about there and thinking about is it's a really good place to go and find quiet. So for me, it's like that's yeah. the white, you know, that's the white space, right? right? And often interesting things emerge, and and it it just allows me that process. And actually, admittedly, so it, I I sort of set my social media aside, so I deliberately have a quiet period of time. But I've actually started recording audio booths down there, and uh -huh. for whatever reason, the sound of the ocean um, and the waves coming in is quite loud and it makes for great audio booths people really love. I, I'm getting all these requests. Please go and record another audio booth at the beach. Who yeah, would have known? Who would have known? But that ambient noise is pretty fascinating. So this is another cool segue. Um, it just occurred to me. Um, you, you chatted with the founder of Audio Booth on one of I your 45 know. conversations and I was it's always so exciting to talk to entrepreneurs where, whose ideas have taken off. I mean, his idea is, is just really, you know, there's other ideas like it, but his idea is really taking off and creating its own movement. So tell us about your discussion with him and what that was like. Yeah, I mean, that was a great discussion. I, that was Mark Rock. He is the CEO, uh, founder of AudioBoo. And... It, what was really neat was to really hear him talking about uh, just the whole idea of, you know, how sound can be social, right? How it really can be incredibly social and that, so, I mean, 
for AudioBoo, it's about building a platform that really enables people to easily capture sound. And whatever that sound is, whether it's um, you know, a conversation like you and I having a conversation, or it's an event, or it's you know, at a conference, it, I mean, it, it doesn't really matter. From AudioBoo's perspective, I mean, he, he, Mark talked quite a bit about how you know, really they're, they're looking to be like the YouTube of audio. Right? So they're not really concerned about the content in terms of what people are producing. They're, they're concerned um, just about building you know, a really amazing platform that allows people to, um, to capture sound. How big, is, how big is their community? Um, I, and I know they're out of the UK, right? Yeah, they're based, yeah. They're based in London. And, uh, you know, actually, I, I will admit we didn't actually get into how many users there are on AudioBoo, but, um, you know, it, it's fair to say it's really growing, and they are working quite hard now to kind of get more into North America and, you know, all of that as well. Um, but they've got some very, very interesting things on the horizon, and, you know, what I'll do is I can throw up a link when we post this, because we're going to post our... our um, our startup jam on our list we list where we put them all and I can throw in the link actually to that audio boo with Mark because if you're at all interested in sort of where audio potentially is going he's got um, you know a, probably 10 minutes in there where he talks about the future yeah. of what they're looking at. Yeah and I, I love this because it addresses the needs of the individual. We all heard in, in all of my inboxes for, you know, uh, targeting marketers, video is it. Video is the only thing that you should be doing. I mean, that's not exactly what they said, but you would think that if you're not doing video and using it, you know, consistently, you're going to lose the race. And then here comes audio, which in a way doesn't seem as evolved as video. But it, no. it's becoming, it's, it's evolved in a different way, isn't it? It is, and I mean, we did talk about that a bit because the reality is that audio, in a lot of ways, is actually less intrusive, right? So, for example, if you are somewhere and you say, "Okay, I, you know, I want to just um, make a video of you right now," people tend to be a little bit more like, "Oh, you know, I'm not sure the lighting's not right," or you know, they're a little bit more intimidated, perhaps. Whereas um, and we know this, I mean, um, you know, Paul O'Mani in Ireland, who you and I have learned, I mean, he's like the master audio boo user. Uh, also, um, Documentally is another one uh, who is, you know, just, I mean, just an amazing number of audio boos. But the ease in which I think you're able to just, you know, literally uh, take out your device, whether it's, you know, your, your Android phone or your iPhone, and, you know, you just say, hey, can we have a conversation? You know, we're having a conversation right now. And just turn it on and record it. It's, it's pretty easy. Yeah. I, um, you're making it very attractive for me. I mean, yeah. I, you're, you're selling it in a way that um, I would like to get more involved uh, with yeah. it. So, and, and because of the ease of use, um, you know, I've been struggling with the blogs and, you know, the, the video thing, and I think this whole Google Plus, this Hangout concept right. has gotten me into video in a different way. Um, it's, yeah. You know, to your point, it's, you know, the old style video, like where you have to be all prepared and everything. That's a little intimidating. This is, is. far less intimidating. It is. Um, I think it just, it makes it, uh, I, I'm actually just sending out a tweet right now saying we're talking about Audio Blue because uh, I know that, you know, Mark was really, he was very interested and keen in terms of the, um, just these hangouts and, and he, when he participated in the conversation with me, he was also, um, it was his first hangout, so I would like him to, to know that we're, we're chatting about audio boo a bit. But I do think that um, there is a real ease of use, number one. Number two, it's less intimidating. Uh, three, it's easy. Uh, four, what's really interesting is that you can do different things with it. So I have actually, on a couple of occasions in a Hangout, produced an audio booth simultaneously. And so this, this is an interesting thing when you talk about content, right? So the lay, I mean, this fascinates me, the layering of content in terms of how you can create content. So 
you know, we're having this hangout right now. I mean, simultaneous to that, I could be running my audio boot app and, you know, producing that content in another way and sending that out to another platform. Um, and that's, in, that's interesting, you know, without having to go through the process of downloading, say, the, you know, the, the audio off of the YouTube video and like, so, you know, there's a lot of ways that it could be, it could be done. And Nick Kellett, who, when he went to the 140 conference, he, he just uh, did a, quite a significant number of audio booths. Uh, he recorded, you know, at, like probably a hundred of the talks at the 140 conference. It was amazing. Yeah, it um, it becomes a matter of entertainment too. To I mean, it's like people, you know, you can read books, you can watch TV, you can do lots of things with your spare time, right? Mm -hmm. um, getting, I would think, um, spending some time listening, as I have to some of Paul's audio booths, mm -hmm. of listening to his storytelling. It's very soothing and kind of fun yeah. to listen to someone. It's it's like books on tape and it is. Um, yeah, and it's actually I think a lot more interesting than sitting and watching programming on TV. I think I'm getting to the point where programming on TV just isn't worth it. It's not interesting enough. It's so shallow. Well, I mean, dare I say this is crazy? Is it could it be like reality audio? I, I mean, do you know what like that it maybe that's a crazy thing, but it you know, it is that it, it feeds that social side, right? Like when we talk about, when Mark talked about the audio is social, well, if you take, you know, some of these people who are doing, I mean, basically what Paul does is he blogs by audio. You know, he's an audio blogger, basically, is, is you know, so he's producing content, you know, probably three to five audio booths a day. And it could be as simple as, you know, this is this is what I'm planning for my business this week. This is what I'm working on. Or, you know, here's I'm interviewing this person. Um, in fact, he did an audio with a startup in Ireland, and they ended up talking about 45 conversations. And now the um, the CTO of that um, of that startup is going to be part of 45 conversations. You know how? And the reason that happened is because I listened to Paul's audio boo heard them having the conversation and I reached out, you know, and I said to this gentleman who is with the startup, hey, do you want to be part of 45 Conversations? Now, that's that whole, what do you have going on there? You've got connecting, relationship building, you know, uh, again, using this whole other platform, right? And right. a whole social side of it. Like, it was really interesting for me to hear a group because Paul was at a, um, I think, a, a, a co some kind of conference or event. And it was fascinating to hear a group of people reflecting on what I was doing with 45 Conversations. Like, how interesting is that? That I didn't know any of those people, yet, you know, there they were able to have a discussion, and he audio booed it. So, interesting ways to really, um, I don't know, interesting ways to use audio. Yeah, I, that's, that's been a, a, a great thing um, to watch. So. Um, what's on board for you um, in the next week or so? Well, um, I, you know, I, I have client work that I'm uh, continuing to do, uh, obviously, with um, clients and areas that I have focused on. Um, and, uh, you know, that's pretty awesome. I just actually, you know, came through a whole educational retreat with one of my clients, and that was really, really wonderful. Um, and I guess, you know, I'm finishing off 45 conversations in terms of getting to my actual 45, and I'm also preparing, as you know, um, to start sharing what's next with 45 conversations, and that's pretty exciting. So right now, behind the scenes, I'm doing a lot of, you know, getting a lot of the pieces in order, um, but uh, then it's going to be starting to, to roll some of that out, right, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I can I can feel the momentum and energy um, through the hangout, and um, I've seen it evolve in ten days' time, and it's it's been <laughs> it's been really fun. Um, well, and so you've been I, incredibly. I mean, Marty, you've been so supportive and incredible. It, you know, I I thank you for you know everything that you've done to help me with it. Uh, you know, every step of the way. It's 
being a I share your enthusiasm. I mean, I this is why I've worked with some startups over the years and um, maybe later stage startups and things like that where, you know, I, I actually help companies to formulate how they're going to enter the market and how they might develop their product. And um, this is fun for me. So uh, collaborating with you and offering you some of my observations has just been an extraordinary experience because it's been very compressed. Um, I've seen you develop a lot over several months, but I would say in the last month it's been pretty significant. Well, it is kind of funny how, you know, when you're working on something for a period of time, um, you know, it seems often it seems like, gosh, am I ever going to get there, right? You're just, you're, you're waiting, and then all of a sudden you're right. It just, it comes. When it comes, and when it comes, it comes, and it's, it's moving fast. It does. It does. I can see that. Yeah. So it's yeah. good. It's good. So, you know, um, I guess we, we should come to an end on this startup yeah. jam, right? Well, but before, yeah. we, before we end, what, what are you finishing up or what do you, what's happening well, to you over the next week or so? I have this idea that I've been working on this last week, and I, I'm putting out a call for marketing hacks. And so what I mean by that, what are the tips and tricks and shortcuts that you use in marketing, whether it be a, a PR hack or a social media hack, um, and I'll give you an example. Um, one of my favorite PR hacks is, you know, you're a new company and you don't even know how to reach out to the media and to get your story out because that's a very important thing to do. So um, one of the ways to do is to go to a competitor's website, take a look at all of the publications because they always publish their stories so they might have 20 stories on there over the past two years you look at every single editor that has written about them and then you do using Google and other methods you try to find their email addresses because sometimes their email addresses aren't on their websites they're not necessarily on the publication websites um, you know some of them are some of them aren't and then you that's building a list that's, build, that's a PR wow. hack for building a list. You know, these things don't have to be complicated, but if, you, if this isn't your world and you don't know that, that's a very good, useful piece of information. So I'm putting out a call for marketing hacks and ideas, and I'm publishing a list of short hacks. Rather than doing my perfectionist strategy, which is <sighs> assemble a hundred of them and write a whole book about it, yeah. I'm, I'm going to do them you know, a piece at a time. And I'm also um, thinking that, uh, you know, a Google environment, a Google Plus or a Google Hangout might be the way to get them out there and snip it. So I'd be having a conversation with myself <laughs> in those. Yeah. You could do it on air and then it goes straight to, um, go straight to the channel. And then I could be writing about them and it would be a great lead up to the marketing hackathons that we're going to be putting together and you know, we just want, uh, those of us who are collaborating in these hackathons, we just want to make life easier for people who are growing businesses. That's awesome. That's really, that's really great. And I mean, it's great that you're getting, you're getting these hacks from all different people. Are you going to use, are you using Listly to, you know, put some of it together? In terms absolutely. Of, absolutely. Absolutely awesome. As soon as I get my call for participants and all that stuff out there, this is a kind of a late-breaking idea. <laughs> in the You're last awesome. 48 hours. <laughs> Talk about Agile, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, and I have three Agile um, conversations today, so that's, well, good, that's what good I'm Well, good luck with your, co your conversations. Yeah. I think I have, three, I have three conversations, too, so mm -hmm. that's cool. We're off, we're off to a good start today. And, right. you know, so we'll, we'll, we'll call it a day, I guess, as far as this startup jam goes, and Dear goodness, hopefully the lovely April Ennis will be back with us for um, our next startup jam, and we will catch up with her and all of the cool stuff that she's got going on. Because she, she, I mean, she just did a whole social media for like a huge oh. music festival in, on Prince Edward Island. So you know, she, um, she's got a lot of cool stuff going on. Right, so and she's that, yeah. she's promoting a social marketing um, hack workshop. Um, she and I have been talking about hacks, so she's now taking some of this, this hack um, mentality of helping people do things, and she's promoting that. And I just, you know, I, I wish yeah. I could, I wish I could be there in person. 
We'll hang out. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll hang out. We'll hang out. <laughs> we'll hang yeah. out. We will. There we'll you go. All right. right. Well, Mark, right. you have an awesome day, and uh, right. we will start up Jam again real soon, okay? Thanks. Bye. Okay, and bye to our viewers. Bye. bye.